YouTube. How's it going? It's your boy, the Bad Wolf. So I'm sitting here thinking. I've been starting to study a little bit on for one of my friends on how to get out of child support issues and situations. Now I'm not for or against it. Um, I just think that that's an issue for the private side, not necessarily for a pretend corporation that's not actually a government agency but acting under the uh, jurisdiction of a government agency. Basically it's a private for-profit company that's making, that's getting a majority of the money and the kids aren't um, and forcing mothers or dads to, to pay. Now do I think you should take care of your children? Yes. But forced to pay and then they take more of the money from the, the mother and the child? I don't agree with that. And I also think that they should be putting that money on a card that allows the person to only buy things for the children. Just my perspective. Um, but anyway, this is about the Social Security, which is attached to that. Now, I've heard, I have heard of people doing a, a revocation of signature or signature uh, rescission um, along with other things, which in the future I'm going to create some paperwork for that for those people who want it. Um, but right now I don't have it all put together. Um, and once again, as always, this is educational information. So using it is up to you and you can do your own research. Um, nobody can guarantee success in any situation, but uh, I can provide you with paperwork that has been successful. Um, but everybody's situation is different. That's one of the reasons why I don't sit down and take the time to analyze people's cases and try to, you know, get them out of whatever they're in. Uh, but anyway, so really this is about the Social Security uh, number. Now, they're able to go after your bank accounts. They're able to look into your basically everything and anything because of that Social Security number. Now, I'm going to be getting the beginning of this next year an ITIN number, which is an individual taxpayer identification number, and it's for U.S. nationals. Okay, They refer to us as non-resident aliens. Okay. So, if you have a social security number and you can possibly get rid of it, get rid of it. Rescind it, close it, return it. If you read it anywhere on the back, it tells you that that number, that account is really theirs, but you're basically the authorized user of it. But you're assuming responsibility for it through your social or through your driver's license, through your whatever else. Okay? I mean, even loans they're really responsible for them. Even though you signed for them, you're just saying that you're the guarantor, basically, or even though you're really the agent. Okay, it's kind of a mix of both. But still yet, at the end of the day, it's their card, their number, their account. They're responsible for it. You're utilizing that benefit, that privilege. Okay, so here's my thought. If you apply, if you apply for an ITIN number, and yes, you have to pay uh, the, the yearly fee on it. That's considered foreign. It's a foreign number because you have to pay for it, so it's private. Unlike your social, which is, you know, public. Uh, their property, but it's used for, for the public. It's kind of weird how it goes back and forth because, anyway, we won't get into that. It's too deep and weird. Uh, but anyway, so you've got your ITIN number. And now what happens if you use that, you build a credit on it, uh, and then you apply for loans? It, it, they say it can be used for everything, basically a social security can, right? Okay, so you can apply for these things, you have to build up the credit on it. It's one way to be able to start fresh uh, for those people who want, uh, you know, new things, new credit cards, new whatever. Um, but my thing is, is if you apply with to the bank with an ITIN number, that account by law by technicality from what I can see would then be under private or foreign jurisdiction now they do have the bank themselves do have an account or a rapport with the federal GOV but your particular account because of that number being foreign and private my thought is that it would then be foreign and private to the GOV and they won't be able to access your funds if that's what's going on. Just 
theoretically saying, hypothet educational purposes. Um, so for like me, my social is currently tied to my house, so I don't want to close it out because I, I'm not going to give, we'll call them uh, Fels Wargo, uh, the ability to have anything over me because those people hate me right now. They're just trying to find any kind of way because I'm going uh, back and forth with them on issues with you know the mortgage being valid, not valid, things of that nature. So I can't let them have anything over me like that. So I would suggest the same. So before getting rid of it, you might want to do like me, is live as far in the private as you can, but have access to the public. And getting an ITI number will allow me, you, and whoever else to begin to further the distance. Because every time you use the social security card from what I found out you're re-upping your membership with them okay so you're I mean you're never truly out but they can show oh well look you've been actively using it actively using it whereas if you have an ITIN number you say I haven't used that in 20 years you know or I sent you a letter you know doing you know telling you that I, I understand that I'm only the authorized agent and I assume no liability for it and that it is to me considered you know closed you know, not turned in, but closed via, I'm not utilizing that, that account, okay? So if you have anything attached to it, then you have to, like I said, do like me and be careful on how you, you tread, but you can definitely start moving into the private by getting that number and utilizing it for other things, okay? Which will probably help you out, you know, in such things as you buying... Um, you know, a gun or a new car or, you know, loans. You have, but like I said, you probably have to build up the credit on it first. So start small, get a credit card, put a small amount on, on there, pay it off. Even if you have to get a secured card, for those people who don't know that there are such things called secured cards, those are cards that normally you have bad credit or no credit. You can take those, put $100 on them or $200 on them. They typically will give them back to you in a year as long as you make all your payments on time and uh, you can establish credit for anybody, no matter how bad your credit is. As long as you have 100 or 200 bucks, you can get one of these cards uh, and then uh, rebuild your credit, okay? Or build new credit on a new number. So that's about it, guys. Um, appreciate you stopping in. Don't forget to check out the offers down below, um, the discounts. Uh, any opportunities are also down there. If they're not down there, then they're on the YouTube uh, main page, the About Me section. Um, otherwise, it's getting chilly here in the Midwest, so uh, I will be inside hopefully more, and I will be bringing you guys a lot more videos. Keep in mind that I only make these about uh, once a month, uh, usually in you know 10 stacks. So when your phone starts getting notifications, that's because it's that time. Um, so I apologize for that, but don't worry, it won't be every single day. Just one swoop once a month. So if you want to take off the notifications, that's fine. Uh, otherwise, keep them on and you'll know when I'm doing that thing. So, appreciate you guys. Take care. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the donations. Uh, just enjoy life. Stay away from the weird 